I'm gonna have to start this video with a disclaimer. Don't harass anyone mentioned in this video. I know there are some fucking freaks watching this video, so I'll be censoring every name of the people, players, or anyone else that is negatively mentioned in this video. And when I do mention names of players or teams, it's used for context. Because of this, I won't be able to link various videos, threads, or tweets I used in my credits list, like I usually do. Excuse this inconvenience. I'm not trying to get my ass bound for harassment, so if you're a person that wants to tell people to kill themselves for not unbinding the market garden, I would highly recommend seeing a therapist. I've been playing competitive since late 2020, and I can confidently say that I cannot recommend getting into competitive. In Europe, at least, I don't know what's up in America or down under. ETF 2 has been on a downward spiral for quite some time. Really, we should have seen it coming. It seems like for every step forward, etf 2 also decides to take three steps back. From the outside looking in, they really don't know what the fuck is going on. Every season something seems to get banned for reasons that only seem valid on paper. And it's hard to know the intentions of these changes as they are never stated under a pile of information or just known from playing fucking Chinese whispers. Because there's no word or pdf file to see how we even got here. It's all in the dumpster fire that is the etf 2 homepage. Let's go back to when the lock and load got banned in season 45. Here's the post where they announced the change. Whitelist update. The decision to ban the lock and load started after receiving feedbacks from the prem players. We have reviewed this and came to the conclusion that the upsides brought by the weapon are superior enough compared to the downsides to be considered banned. Starting off great, we're only factoring in what the prem players think, which is about 48 people in total. We're not factoring in what the, wait, let me do the math, 993 other main roster players think. Amazing. Here they are making the case for engineers' buildings being destroyed too fast, which in my opinion is such a dog shit reasoning. Engineer on last is already really powerful. If you don't have an engineer on last, you're practically trolling, with it being so much harder for the enemy team to sack in to get your meta force. If we look at some past seasons where we banned weapons based on how well they did, it was mostly for holding last for long periods of time. For example, if we look at the battalion's backup, it was partly banned for use on last for making the game slow down to a crawl until the soldier class and got the banner charged above that shit. The lock and load is not that. The lock and load speeds up pushing in to last. Then making the case that the lock and load should be banned because it's good against engineers, a defensive class I might add, doesn't make any sense because we should actively try to nerf holding last. Last is already a really good place for the defending team because how maps are designed with spawns being very close to the actual fighting, allowing quick off classes and resupply to get back in the fight with full ammo and the health and crit heals, plus 25% of travel speed. I think this next reason is so lame. They say that because of the travel speed, engineers can't get their buildings up and at this point they only seem to take these stats on paper and not in practice because this is just simply not a thing if you build your sentry like right side of sunshine spawn instead of left side as an example. And I personally think here it would add a risk reward situation. Do you risk your life to keep your gun alive or do you give up your sentry and go on a different class like pyro or heavy or just back the scout? Grenades do not tumble when fired. Has anyone ever complained about the fucking grenades tumbling? I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, oh man, I didn't kill that soldier because my grenades didn't tumble correctly. Honestly, this is a very minor advantage the lock and load has, but no one's gonna choose the lock and load over, let's say, the iron bomber, because it doesn't have tumbling. In a competitive environment, rollers are barely used on purpose. This is just another one that doesn't make any sense to me. Rollers surprisingly get a lot of kills and are used for spamming to make players more hurt for a potential sack. The utility of a roller can also not be understated. If there's a roller in Sunshine Cafe and the enemy demo is a pack in Cafe, and I also happen to be unbuffed, it will mean that I have two choices. One, I tank the roller and try to fight the demo on health where I get one pipe. Or two, I wait until the roller explodes and try to get the demo while he's leaving. Do not sleep on the rollers, man. I'd say this weapon is completely fine against sentry guns, because the only way a demo would spam a gun if a doorway isn't being covered by one of your soldiers. And even then, it's usually both of your soldiers spamming the gun rather than a demo. What they should have banned the lock and load for is it being unreactable at mid and short ranges. Its longer range allows it to snipe enemies across the map for 100 damage outside of any other class effective range, other than like the sniper and medic crossbow. It's also interesting to note that only one demo used the lock and load most of the time, which was the demo for the best team in the league at the time. And fuck it, while we're at it, let's take a look at some other questionable bans. The battalion's backup. Witness Gaming and Backyard Bullies, the top two team, used this only on last and wouldn't do anything until they had the full charge to buff that shit, making it for a slow ass game. These ban, however it was only backyard bullies and witness gaming who abused the unlock on holding last. You could also make the argument that this also removed an option of getting battalions on trying to bust the last hold. And I think this would have been a lot less prevalent if we kept experimenting with the timer and tweaking the map layout, as this weapon was banned only one season into using the 5 minute timer, and maps like snake water being notoriously hard to push in and out of. Banning the battalions felt more like a bandaid fix rather than an actual improvement, as any other unlock still allows the teams to just jack it off at last. I think experimenting with 4 minutes or even 
three minutes would make this weapon worse as it's a longer build rate than the other banners. This weapon was also only banned by Premiership player feedback without a reasoning, just a yes or no. This is such a dumb ban, allowing heavy to get the mid fast is something that already exists in the current game, except with this weapon you can get buffed to 450 on the rollout. Which on paper seems pretty good, but in reality there's only like one or two maps that are good for a heavy to mid, where the heavy players just roleplay as an anti-aircraft gun anyways. And even if you win the mid, you are stuck on the slowest class in the game, with its only faster movement option being on the cooldown. Even in RGL where they unbanned the stake like two seasons ago, there was only one team that ran it to mid, and they did it like once, so it really isn't a big fucking deal. Also, side note here, what the fuck are these experimental cups? Look at RGL's experimental cups, unbanning Soda Popper, Sydney Sleeper and Rescue Ranger among others. And now look at etf 2 experimental cups. Winger, banned. Solemn Vow, banned. Weapon pickups, yeah fuck it, banned. I would love to smoke the same thing the etf admins are smoking, because I'd be faded for over a month straight. Detonator. The detonator is only good on like last holds to spam the enemy team or clearing sticks around doors when pushing out of any choke, which seems really powerful on paper until you realize what class this weapon is for and how of a non-factor it actually is. The only reason why this would be banned is for the spam capabilities of the unlock, which is annoying at best, because it's still a pyro, it's only gonna appear on last, and banning the detonator really won't change anything other than getting more dpm on the logs. Both the detonator and the scorch shot got banned for the reason that the afterburn buff in jungle inferno was too great. Interestingly though, this was in the global whitelist era of DF2. If we look at the global whitelist rules for banning weapons, you could still answer no to all criteria, and even more interestingly, NA didn't follow the global whitelist ban on this. And another reason for banning it because it's extremely spammable. You know what other classes have extremely spammable projectiles? Soldier and Demo and they are far ahead of the damage output that a detonator or scorch shot does. Also side note here, what the f*** happened to the global whitelist? It was the most progressive whitelist we've ever had with weapons like the Wrangler and the Vaccinator being unbanned. And every league using it, which was fucking sick. And after 2021 it just disappeared without a word. Mr. Slim quit and he just died or some shit? Mr. Slim, if you can hear me, save me Mr. Slim. Save me from these evil people, the gas bastard in the base jump. I don't think anyone would mind this getting unbanned, like the gas bastard dude. What are you gonna do with the fucking gas bastard that you couldn't do with the stock shotgun? Wait around for like a minute until you get the weapon only to do afterburn damage? Great. Having the base jumper banned is also very questionable because I don't think anyone would want to give up the gunboats or grenades for a parachute. It's only really useful for acting like a World War II style bomber plane in sack situations, but you'd really have to set this up beforehand. And soldiers should be holding chokes anyways, which will make it harder for any parachute bombers to, to come in. And even if they somehow get in, they already take like 50 each damage for jumping and they get an underwhelming result by moving slow in the air. And once again, you give up grenades or the gunboats. It's just a dumb ban. I don't even think these weapons have been tested since they were added and changed back in 2017. The winger. I have to say, this is the most questionable ban of all time. And I think even suggesting this just shows what kind of slippery slope we're on. I would have loved to go over the reason why this weapon should be banned, but this just never stated. For all of the people who can't vote, banning this just looks so bad. Our top players just given a Google Doc of, hey, here's what we'd possibly like to ban, what do you think? Without giving a reason for why you'd want to ban a weapon. Here are my best guesses why they would want to ban it, because I wouldn't even know. 1. Repositioning to high ground is too powerful. Repositioning to high ground is definitely easier with the winger, but the thing is that it's faster and not the winger exclusive. Most of the time you'll only be saving like maybe half a second of climbing instead of doing a winger jump. 2. The weapon has comparable DPM to stock. Having a weapon with comparable DPM doesn't really matter. There are so many legal weapons right now that do the same DPM as stock or slightly more than stock, and it's not game breaking or troubling in the slightest. 3. We need to nerf scout. I get that scout is one of the best classes in the game right now, but taking away weapons isn't the solution, as it's not the scout's weapons that's the problem, it's the scout class itself. If we were to take every unlock from scout, we'll still have the same conversation. 4. It's too powerful in 1v1 situations. It doesn't make any sense because we've already nerfed the winger with plugins, and if you're dying to a winger 1v1, you probably suck ass at this game. <laughs> There's so many ways to win a scout 1v1, and banning the winger isn't gonna make the scout significantly easier for any other class. At this point of the video, I'd like to address some counterpoints people may have. Allowing X weapons on Y class makes them viable B run full time. All of the specialist classes don't have the speed or damage output that the normal generous classes have. And even if they are close to viable, people would still refuse to run this new lineup, as the meta right now is the one they know best. Having to figure out a whole new character and the strategies and counter strategies is something that takes time. And I've learned, top players hate to develop counter strategies. 2. X weapons are not fun to play against. This is something I can't really comment on, as fun as a Objective. 
So I'll leave this point as is. 3. You are a bottom diff player and you don't know what you're talking about. I think this is super dumb and it's just discrediting what the lower division players think about the game. You also have to realize that top players are a minority in the leagues and that players under div 1 or div 2 make up the majority of the league. Not listening to the majority is a recipe for disaster. And people actually discredit lower division players. Like watch this. Grim TF2 is the most objective form of feedback for how well balanced the game is. Like fair point. Grimmieship is the top of the top players. However, their opinions still affect everyone without their input. And when this person promptly got called out for this, this was their response. Yikes dog. You literally could have said anything else and it would have probably been agreeable. And in my opinion, this just shows the kind of elitist mentality top players have against lower division players. And the thing that they are referring here to is the removal of the gunboat spot. Him, which was chosen to be removed by a vote. Alright, starting off good right, a vote democracy looking good. Quote, this vote was quite close, with it inching out to a no overall. However, due to how close it was, we have decided to go with what Premiership House voted on. So you ask Div 1 and Div 2 players to vote on this, and yet they choose to ignore the people that they ask to vote. Why would you even ask people to vote if you're not gonna listen to the majority anyways? And look at the amount of voters. 38 Premiership players, 10 Division 1 players, and 15 Division 2 players. So not only did they not listen to the overall vote, they only had 25 players that are not in Premiership vote. They didn't even care about what they had to say. And it doesn't even add up. 10 Division 1 players and 15 Division 2 players. There are 8 Division 1 teams, which means 38 Division 1 players didn't vote if we only count the main roster players. And for Division 2 is not even any better. There are 16 teams in total for Div 2 and only 15 people People voted, which means 81 people didn't get the vote or decided not to, which I highly doubt. Wait, I'm getting a call on my lobster phone here. Oh, well, my team of hackers have actually infiltrated the vote for banning these weapons, and it's just a nothing burger. I really would have liked to see what the ETF2 or Avans think about these weapons and make the case for why to potentially ban these weapons. Right now, it just looks like they choose whatever random weapon that hasn't been banned yet. But still, asking people to vote and not listening is the definition of dishonesty, and quite frankly, corrupt. Like, this isn't the fucking Russian election. And in a scout centric metagame, this plugin was a fucking blessing. Scouts not being able to go in willy silly anymore into soldiers was really good, especially since soldiers practically had a losing match against scouts. Soldiers didn't suddenly become the most powerful class over scouts. Soldiers just had an easier time bombing and not dying to 100 damage self-damaging rockets. And this isn't the, even the first time this happened. In the winter season of 2023, Clearcut was supposed to be played. It was specifically stated that we'll try playing this map to gather feedback. And guess what? It wasn't fucking played. Fucking clap it up, man. And even Entropy, a map in development, gathered a lot of hatred. Which is super dumb, because it's in fucking development. Does anyone know how important it is to have a map in development included to the league? Let's count everyone. What maps were in development were also being included to the league? Process, Sunshine, Gullywash, Snakewater, Product, Metalworks, Granary Pro, Sultry. And this was a division-wide vote. No Prem slash Div 2 vote bullshit. If Prem is the most objective form of feedback there is, then why won't you give it? Also, a quick side note here. I think top players should consider what kind of responsibility they have. Lower divisions and casual players are always going to look up to the best players. If Banny suddenly starts walking up to mid with an AK-47, then we'll likely see a triple down effect where the open players start emulating what he's doing because it's obviously working, so why not? For an actual example, Antonio and Bermobecker showed that everyone that yeah, it's possible, and then more people came along and showed that it was actually a viable strategy. Banning weapons prematurely leads for less innovation in the meta, and in most cases isn't needed because the situation the weapon is used for are bad at best and niche in most cases. Like this just sounds a whole bunch of leaven to me. What's up? Can we please change the rules? I don't think you should be allowed to run away for 5 minutes, can we please change the rules? I am also a big fucking idiot. I think in most cases top players don't like things being different, and I feel like they just ban weapons because it's bullshit or unfun. They just decided to ban whatever fuck off all not was trending at the time. Like in RGL, the market garden was fucking abused by Jay and Soapy last year, but you barely hear people complaining about it now. It's still there, sure, but it's a lot less. Premiership players just have this mentality of, this is stupid, we should ban it, which is super dumb. Is the market garden stupid? Yes. Is it unbeatable? No. Is the lock and load stupid? Yes. Is it unbeatable? No. So on and so forth. Now I am not advocating for unbanning every weapon as some weapons should straight up not be allowed. We should only ban weapons when said weapons are over centralizing in such a way that major or multiple skills of the games are invalidated. Also a reason for banning weapons is keeping bugged weapons out. Bugged can mean a lot of things, so I'd like to add some new definition to bugged weapon. Game breaking bugs and minor bugs. Game breaking bugs are bugs that are over centralizing and one or various skills become invalid. And minor bugs are bugs that don't really change the meta game, but are annoying at worst, but still the world would have been better without them. Much like mosquitoes. A lot of the minor bugs can just be prevented by adding another rule banning the bugs in question. Alternatively, for both minor and game breaking bugs, we can add plugins to fix these bugs. We did it for a major change, like the plugin for the gunboats, so why shouldn't we do it for weapons that are actually bugged?
It's also good to keep in mind that having the specialist classes be as applicable as the generous classes is a recipe for disaster. Making heavy as versatile as the soldier would slow down the game a lot, as it would be a lot harder to sack in and push chokes, as you'd have to deal with a 450 heavy or an airblast pyro first. And even if all of the so called problematic weapons get unbanned, I still don't see a world where a heavy, for example, would be permaround. A weapon that allows heavy to get to mid isn't currently banned, and no one is arguing that it should be. Like it or not, lower division players are the lifeblood of this game, and lower division players should be treated equally as experienced players. Or rather, we shouldn't just take feedback from friend players as they obviously cannot handle the responsibility of a whole league's rule set. So in conclusion, what am I accusing ETF to all of? The admins don't care about the lower division players. It's obvious, only listening to a certain group is just another definition of aristocracy. ETF to admins don't play the game. They banned the lock and load for reasons that are only relevant on last. ETF to admins blindly follow what the prem players think. Prem players don't like change and abuse their top player privilege to change the rule set for everyone. Prem players only want to devolve the meta game rather than innovating the meta. So I'd like to thank ETF2 and everyone surrounding it for their contributions. But until these issues get addressed, I cannot recommend anyone getting into your league. Whitelist Whitelist update. Update. The decision to ban the lock and load this season started after receiving feedback from the Prem players. We have reviewed this and came to the conclusion that the upsides brought by the weapon were superior enough compared to the downsides to be considered banned. Comparing the upsides with the downsides, we feel the lock on it is an upgrade from the iron bomber slash grenade launcher. Dive, so you want me to shoot your shit right now? Yeah, yeah just shoot my shit. Okay. I'm... Nice. <laughs> that was crazy. Thank you so much, Ron. I'm that's going straight in the video. Yeah, that's... that's going in, man. Oh my god, dude. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Bad Shut the shit. fuck up. Bad <laughs> <that shit. laughs> yeah, ban the look. It's too OP. Ban the look alone.